Welcome to The Advocate, your Sunday reminder that important conversations are among the necessary tools for a sinner society. I'm talking on today on a new dawn in a new year, early lessons for, from 2023 events. Hussein Olariwaju will be talking about our focus in 2023 should be on taking responsibility. Why Michael Gucci is going to be asking where are the jobs? Today, expect a mix of seriousness and laughter. We will be back after this break. A new dawn in a new year. Early lessons from 2023 events. Over the last few days, a myriad of notable events has occurred globally and nationally. These events have been viewed as a catalyst to a new dispensation. As we ponder and analyze their impact on national and global scale, they are from the Papal Front, the death of Pope Benedict XVI on December 31st, 2022, has been trending news in the world scene as we remember the Pope's life and time in the Papacy. Pope Benedict XVI was the first Pope in 600 years to resign from office on February 11, 2013, on the grounds of ill health, an act of responsible leadership. On the Russia Ukraine war scene, 1st of January 2023, was attack and counter-attack from both sides, with Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky hopeful for, for victory, while Russian President Vladimir Putin reinforcing for more assault strike on Ukraine. This begs the question, how long would humanity suffer? The first time since 1923, the US House of Representatives failed to elect its speaker after first round of vote and even up to the seventh ballot. This chaotic scenario, however, was managed in a collected, transparent electoral process, indicating that politicking may not be easy, but should be inclusive and transparent and violence-free. Nationally, the awareness of political inclusiveness is spreading fast. The need to get it right by putting service to the people first is overshadowing the tribal sentiment. Recently, the South South and Southwest political titans are endorsing the Obidati campaign for president, seeing that they embody the needs for the vast majority of Nigerians, which is fairness, empathy, and development. From the Russia-Ukraine war, to the flood in Pakistan, to COVID-19 spread in China, to the US House representative inconclusive election, and the clamor for a better Nigeria, it could be inferred that the world is changing and new solutions are needed to solve problems for the desired change. On this note, Nigeria as a nation needs to understand the necessity of fairness, intentionality in handling national issues on a political scale. The youth are aware of the rules they play and are not ready for any sabotage come 2023 general elections in February. My fellow advocates, what are your thoughts on the recent incidents that just occurred over the last one week from towards the end of last year to this, uh, the beginning of this year, like the killing of Bolan Lee Rahim. Uh, Uzen, what do you think about police brutality? This case has been lingering long too long. So, uh, thank you, Felix. You see, on the issue of police brutality, I've once said some things about it. It is wrong, you know, and there are a lot of uh, things that we need to look into now. Orientation is needed. You know, you have uh, welfare, welfare of these police officers also is very important. Because when you look at a police officer that stays under the sun, hand, and this same set of person is being paid at the end of the month, like say 40,000, 50,000 naira. Do you understand? Considering the economic situation of things, how things are expensive, you see them. Uh, you know, trying to survive, trying to collect 15 hours and stuff like that. They are aggressive because they are pained, as everybody is. And when you have somebody who is hungry, who is pained, or they are one has to be very careful. However, there should be a constant reorientation of, you know, an ideology to ensure that these police people are expected to protect the interests and secure the civilians. But the, the, it is absurd that is the other way around. Mm -hmm. I, I have a series of experiences from uh, Lagos to Benin to Port Harcourt, you know. A lot of crazy things. You see police 
pointing torchlight inside your eye at the middle of the night. And you're you know? driving. And you're driving. So if you accidentally uh, probably march break because you, you lost vision, they say you kill a police officer. You could recall that one, uh, I, I once said what the police IGP said about if a police officer slap you. Don't slap not, his story, tell you. You know, you know, issues like these are, are actually not things that should be encouraged in a public space. What is wrong is yeah. wrong, no matter who is involved. Uh, no you, matter seem, you seem to like ideology a lot. You know, when this time you talk, you talk about ideology, that the purpose of people doing things. So I'm going to go to Uche. Uh, Uche, what do you think about, by the way, God rest us, so Bolani Rahim, as according to reports, was pregnant with twins, a lawyer, mm -hmm. Lagos-based lawyer, and really real tall, successful, and she has done quite well for herself. She did not commit any crime. The only offense she committed was that she was a Nigerian, in, in Nigeria on Christmas Day, coming mm -hmm. from church. And they were on a professional policeman want to stop them. The next thing was to release the bullets, a poor handling of weapon. After serving 33 years in the police force, so I want to hear your thoughts on this. Okay, thank you, Felix. I think um, the issue of um, police brutality is um, something that has been occurring. Um, what I can say is that um, when we talk about the issue of police brutality, we, we can look far back as how many years ago. These things are, are things that have been occur really occurring. But what I can say is that so a quick fix to that is not something that can happen in one year, two years. If you look at our national culture, you'll find out that there are gaps everywhere. Because the people that are recruited into the Nigerian police force, they are not from Marx. They are among our people. And they are fed with different stories. Oh, if you get into the police force, you can do everything. Even some people within their family, they look forward to having a police officer as their relative because they know they, they have upper hand to oppress other people. So I think um, it's quite unfortunate. The death of Bolanle is one of many. But we can't correct that by just talking about the welfare of um, the Nigeria police force. I think we have to start looking at it from our natural culture as a people because too many things we tend to allow to go, you know, in the name of, you know, being um, a civilized are things that we need to really check back and see in terms of our natural, um, national culture, what is it when we talk about having mutual respect for people? Because the first thing we have to look at is I don't want respect to be on the basis of who you are, what you have, or what um, you can give to me. I want respect to be about you being human in the first place. Giving respect to you because I see you as human, you deserve to be respected. Now, let's go to the issue of how we get to uh, these crops of police officer who have Andrew weapons. The point is we have to look at how are they recruited into the system. We hear they spend six months, one year in the police uh, college. What kind of training are these people? What kind of training do they go through? It's important because the acculturation that they go, go through also form the basis for how they are going to live their life hmm. when they have uh, goals or they have advantage over other people, which should not be in the first place. The focus should be to protect life and property, not oppressing people. But the reverse is the case here, where people oppress the masses. So I think we need to look at how people um, recruited into the Nigeria police force. What kind of training goes on? What, what is their curriculum like? So I think these are fundamental issues. It should be continuously continuous continuous reviewed. Yes. More of courses that encourage empathy, leadership, citizens, um, yeah. Um, a relationship and all those yes, things yes. Be encouraged. so I, I, I'm speaking about uh, insecurity you know um, a week to Christmas there was a, just an attack in Kaduna if you just go on the internet and just type Kaduna Kaduna killing or something you see so many videos uncountable it's, it's rather sad over 31 persons were massacred mm. majorly Christians in Kaduna on a week to Christmas in that particular community of course there are instances where they kill Muslims too but that particular incident some persons think it was like a religious targeted um incident Massacre, so i don't know yeah. whatever it is religion or no religion muslims christians muslims and christians are killed daily what can be done about this can this just stop so i'm going to go back to you Gucci, before going back well to I, I i think um this issue of um people being killed at different intervals without people um Without, we have gotten to that point where we are used to them. We are no longer, in quote, surprised because these things happen every day. I think, um, I don't see it as something that is going to stop because um, 
people protest, people are protesting. I rather think um, we need to look at it from the point of two, two points, point, point of view. One, the leadership. The leadership. I know most times we tend to drive everything towards the presidency, which is fine. But the point is, as a governor, what are the parameters? What kind of awareness? You know, we have national retention agency. What are they doing? We, we really hear about these people and say maybe there is an outbreak of a disease or something. What are they doing? What kind of information are they passing across? Now, we know that the security agencies have a um, huge responsibility to get things fixed. But the point is, what kind of information, what kind of awareness are people passing? Because if you look at it at the end of the day, you cannot totally exonerate the leadership, either um, the federal or the state level, because somehow these things are not happening. If you look at it, they are not um, up to recently. They are not things that you can say they are professional kind of uh, massacre. Yeah, just shabbishly done. Yes, yeah, so it tells but you that there are people within the local, same locality. Local, yeah. So I think you can't say you don't know these people. You can't just tell us you don't know these people. These people, they don't just appear from nowhere. So I think that point of view where people, our leaders need to take responsibility to, you know, one, create awareness of what it means when you kill someone and you're caught, what it means, what the consequences right. are. If, if I have my, um, what's it called, if I have my own way, I don't think you should keep, uh, keep uh, what's it called, uh, if you are caught uh, murdering someone, I don't think they should keep you for how long. Let there be a, 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 a justice system that allow people, you know, three weeks, two months, uh, two months max. You know, be executed. Let After people know this. Yes, let people know what the consequences are. Because because a lot of people say, oh, they've arrested him. They'll take him to prison. One way or the other, they br they'll break out of, break him, her, him or her out of the prison. So I think the issue lies with two people, the, the leadership and also the security agencies. Wow. So, Hussein? Yeah. Uh, my argument will not be far from what he said. Responsibility, right? Take a responsibility from the leadership aspect. Well, beyond uh, the responsibility, let us leave to the facts. Today, it is a lazy hand. They say it's the devil's workshop. workshop. So before now, you have, uh, I, I, I'll just take an example. Before now, you have uh, cattle areas plying to a treaty road channel. This same road channel uh, today, we will build a house with uh, cultivated farms and what have you, to all this kind of thing. Now, they want to move a normal route, they know. They saw houses there, or they saw farm. they hit up the farmland. What do you have in retaliation? Fight. attack fight it causes insecurity right before before now this cattle area don't have a phone but today they can actually communicate within themselves and yeah. say see this thing is happening here i need backup mm -hmm. it's easy to attack oh. communication aspects so it still takes back to because we as a people we don't respect ourselves so if you have a tribe you have this you have that you should respect individual as we should respect individuals as uh, uh, as an entity just before the tribe, before the religion. We should respect ourselves as human beings. Then we we'll start protecting ourselves. Then the leadership I spoke about, just to cap it up, is the community leadership. Just like you said, there is nothing that happens that we don't know. So if the community leaders, the Mayanguas, the Magajis, the villagers, and stuff like that, are at their feet and doing what is necessary and mm -hmm. communicating with the government agency, I think we will cop this thing very fast. All right, thank you very much. So quickly, before we round up this section, I just want you to prove more light on party squabbles. If you watch what's going on in the U.S., inconclusive House Speaker election, no trouble. Yes, politicking is difficult there. It's not easy. But no fights, no violence. They try to communicate. So then when it comes to Nigeria, yeah, you see the back and forth bashing this one. Okay, that okay. One so let me quickly say something on that. I think it's not far from what we always say. In Nigeria, in the United States, you have a democratic ideology as a party. In the uh, uh, same United States, you have democratic um, republican ideology. Yeah. When you want to fund a party election, it is not an individual that funds it. It is the party based on your ideology. They pick their candidate that work in line with the policies of the ideology of the political party, right? And they, the party does the funding and what have you. But reverse is, a, is the case in Nigeria. There is no, I, I, I repeat, there is no political party in Nigeria that has a specific ideology. So, in, you see, you have people of 
different interests. So if my interest is not met at this party, that's why you see somebody lose an, a primary election and moves to another you know, uh, 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 party, party just to get his personal interest. Do you understand? So we need to begin to agree on do we want to work, to, uh, for things to work, or we want to remain the way we are. Hmm. So what do you think about endorsing or not endorsing candidates? Is, should he cause... Should it cause rancor or should it distract the electorate? What do you think? Okay, I, I think in terms of, uh, you know, politics is a game and um, everything matters in politics. Um, endorsement, um, now it has to do with two things. Who is endorsing and who are they endorsing? So, um, endorsement, whether, uh, you know, I've he read some um, response from certain camps about the endorsement that has happened um, last, um, late of recent. But what I can say is... Uh, in politics, who is endorsing and who they are endorsing is very important. So um, endorsement matters. Uh, whether that endorsement will give you victory or not is a different thing entirely, but it matters. It's important. There are certain people who are sitting on the fence at the moment trying to understand where to go. But when certain endorsement comes, you definitely see some people making adjustments. But I know for the political heavyweights, before time, they already know where their loyalty lies and all of that. So it also depends on who is endorsing and who they are endorsing. Thank you very much for your input. As we conclude, let us ponder on this quote by Najib Razak, the sixth prime minister of Malaysia from April 2009 to May 2018. The world is changing quickly and we must be ready to change with it or risk being left behind. Nigeria cannot be left behind. Up next is Hussein. Do stay with us.